Let's begin with the Nicaraguan Revolution. In 1979, the people of Nicaragua, after a very long protracted struggle, rose up and overthrew the U.S. installed and, and supported Somoza dictatorship. It was a small, impoverished country, and the U.S. subjected it to a brutal economic embargo and funded a right-wing contra war against the revolution. But the revolution itself provided an example to the world with its humanity, its internationalism, and its culture. The new revolution was a beacon for workers, activists, and artists in groups like Ventana and Arts for New Nicaragua. Delegations traveled to Nicaragua from throughout the world to learn from the new revolution and contribute to its survival. Despite its meager resources, the revolutionary government, under the leadership of the Frente Sandinista de Liberación Nacional, or the FSLN, threw tremendous resources into rebuilding Nicaraguan culture. Some of the central leaders of the revolution were artists and poets themselves. You can see a photo of me with Ernesto Cardenal, the great poet and revolutionary leader. Solidarity groups formed brigades and conducted workshops, performed, and painted murals. Although the revolution was eventually strangled by the U.S. blockade, the experience of those who worked in Nicaragua helped to inspire thousands of activists throughout the world. I made three trips to Nicaragua. I was part of a labor delegation for the third anniversary of the revolution when I was still working as a machinist. That was in 1982. In 83, I went back and did a series of murals in the city of Leon. And then in 1989, I did a third trip. The first mural I painted was called Two Sandinos. You can see the photo of the silhouettes of Sandino with a group of campesinos who helped paint the mural. I'm not a fan of group murals, so I decided to have a strong hand in the design, and I used these two silhouettes, which are recognizable uh, to all the people in Nicaragua. On the one side is democracy in the revolution, and the workers and artists filled up with all kinds of little imagery of their own design. And the second one was defense of the revolution. This was on the city hall, outside of the city hall of Leon, Nicaragua, which was one of the centers of the revolutionary struggle. I also painted a couple of other pieces while I was there. One was called Ancient Figures, and you can see a couple of the FSLN activists uh, in front of an image on the wall. Some of the uh, culture of Central America has been preserved in places, and, and Latin America, and preserved in places like Guatemala, Bolivia, and other places. But in Nicaragua, uh, a lot of the ancient culture was buried and lost. What the activists were doing was unearthing old images and discovering old images and as they did so I painted some of them uh, on the outside of the FSLN office in Leon. I also worked with AMLI, the Revolutionary Women's Organization, and painted a billboard uh, which was out, placed outside of Leon. Sigamus de Frente con el Frente, face front with the Frente. Women played a central role in the revolution and were very active in overturning some of the machismo culture uh, that existed in Nicaragua. This was a uh, life-changing experience for me to be able to be part of the struggle at a time when people were still mobilized in the streets in the conquest, the uh, revolutionary conquest. The second trip I made, I mostly worked in Esteli, another city in Nicaragua. Uh, one of the first things that I painted there was at the Nika school. I painted a monument to Ben Linder. Ben was a water purification engineer 
he was an internationalista, which is what those of us who came to support the revolution were called, working on a water purification project uh, in the region. And he was assassinated by the U.S.-backed Contras. Um, I wanted to paint a monument to him, and Ben, in addition to being an engineer, would also clown for the children. He would ride around on his unicycle with his clown outfit, his big red nose, and I painted him in that way as my monument to him. The quote there is by the once revolutionary and now authoritarian Daniel Ortega at uh, his funeral, uh, and it was a lovely quote, it said, Ben was the sunrise in the smile of the children who were building a new Nicaragua, something to that effect. I also painted another mural of Che, Che Guevara, one of the central leaders of the Cuban Revolution who went on to fight uh, in revolutionary struggles in Africa and South America, eventually assassinated at the behest of the Central Intelligence Agency. Che has always been a symbol to revolutionaries throughout the world because of his selflessness and his dedication. And he is the symbol of the Sandinista youth. And the Sandinista youth group in Esteli came to me and asked me if I would paint Che on the side of their building, which I was glad to do. And this is very typical, a lot of the work that I do, they had a picture of Che, and I quickly painted it on the wall. Uh, it says, uh, Che Comandante, well, you are the road, yours is the path that we will follow. Uh, there's a small photo with some of the Sandinista youth, uh, and despite their youth, they, some of these were quite hardened uh, combatants in revolution. And the final mural I painted uh, in Nicaragua was at the Children's Hospital in Managua. You can see that is the large photo. It's uh, an eight, about an 80-foot long mural. It's called Mother Earth, and it's a, a woman with her arms outstretched embracing nature. It was painted in a courtyard uh, at the Children's Hospital, in part as a diversion for the children. Because of the U.S. embargo, the hospital lacked many basic medicines that were needed. Many thousands of people died in Nicaragua, and hundreds of thousands of people have died around the world from U.S economic embargoes. It is a weapon of mass destruction that kills more people than the bombs that the U.S. drops in other countries. So this was a diversion for the children. They would be brought out into the courtyard to watch as we painted. And it's basically a fantasy for the children, although there are little uh, political aspects to it. The elephant is has tusks that are the color of the African National Congress. There is a school of fish, but this school of fish is reading books by Marx and Malcolm X. Uh, there's Lenin fishing in troubled waters with uh, my dog Max by his side. And there's, of course, the red horned beast that we all are supposed to fear. So there's a lot of little things like that. I should say that with the exception of the two Sandinos, probably all of this has been destroyed. Most of my work has been destroyed. However, the two Sandinos, which is in Leon, a very revolutionary city, the people there have repainted that mural for over 30 years and consider it a, an important source of pride. While working on the Children's Hospital mural, I really began to see some of the problems that were emerging in Nicaragua because of the U.S. embargo and the pressure put on the Nicaraguan people. A bureaucracy began to install itself and the regime became quite authoritarian. And I especially began to see how privileges were uh, being bestowed 
on those who were loyal to the leadership, how there was a separation going on between the people and the revolutionary government. And since then, uh, things have only gotten worse. It remains for the people of Nicaragua to once again take a revolutionary path and advance their struggle. The only way to really resolve the problems that face working people throughout the world is not to try to make an accommodation with the capitalist countries, but to take the road that Cuba followed, for example, and overthrow capitalism and establish a socialist government.